千里之行，始于足下。A journey of a thousand miles begins beneath the feet. We now gather in the Tao to travel the journey together. 善为士者 ，those who were masters of the Tao were able to seemingly do so little yet accomplish so much. So, wanting to learn from them, we observe their characteristics. That is what we can see. So, the first one is using the visual metaphor, like. Being very cautious in walking across a frozen river, the the character that's translated translates to hesitant, which has a bit of a negative connotation. So if you think about it, we say things like "He who hesitates is lost," but in the original Chinese, it's actually a positive connotation. So the word hesitance is still the closest English equivalent to the original Chinese character, but there's a lot of missing nuance. So let's explore what those missing nuances are. So the translation hesitance doesn't quite convey the feeling of the original, and the original contains this idea. Of mindful awareness, that is being appropriately cautious. You know, like watching where you are going, making sure of your next step before you actually take it, etc. Looking before you leap. So the ancient Tao masters, they always know where they are, what they are doing, or what their next steps should be. Now, because of this awareness, they're able to keep themselves on solid ground. That is, they won't accidentally plant their foot down in a place on the frozen river that is、uh, where the ice is too thin to bear their weight, so they will crash through and drown. So that is the first characteristic of a、uh, Tao master. The Tao master is always mindfully aware. The second one is fearing for neighbors, meaning conscientious. So here again, the word fear carries a connotation that doesn't really convey the original that well. So I'm very grateful for the opportunity. To have this this time, this chance to explain in detail、uh, to you guys, you know, by signing up for this course, you indicate your great interest in the original meaning, the authentic,、uh, true meaning of the Tao Te Ching.、Uh, I'm grateful to be able to explain. So the original text describes someone who's consistent in words and actions. Regardless of setting or circumstance, they look like they are worried about being watched by neighbors, but there's actually not a whole lot of worrying involved. There's,、uh, they look like someone who's constantly being watched, but there's no actual fear in the Tao Master. So the only thing that is constantly monitoring the Tao Master is his own. Conscience, his own discipline to enforce his own practice of the Tao. So, because of that, such a person has integrity and is widely considered to be trustworthy. Can be trusted. Can be trusted with anything. So that is the second characteristic of the Tao master. Let's move on. The third one says solemn, like a guest. So this is somebody who's 
proper and courteous. The translation uh, of the, the original character into the English word solemn, just like the previous two, is missing some of the flavor of the original character. In this case, the original character denotes someone who was dignified and composed, not given to being frivolous or chatty or joking around, clowning around, someone who has gravitas. And this is because doll masters understand the importance of following social protocols. They figure out what the social norms are, where they are going to, and then they observe those norms. So in Mandarin, one way to say polite is ke qi. So these are two characters, ke qi, usually just translated as polite. So for instance, when you thank someone, they may say bu ke qi. Bu means no, ke qi means polite, which means no need to be polite. So ke, the first character there, means guest. Qi, well, that's the same qi that you have seen before in qi gong, meaning energy. So to exude the energy of a guest is to be polite, is to follow social protocols, is to be proper and courteous. So that's the real meaning. So I think you guys are getting a pretty good feel for the original now. So these are the first three. They form sort of a subgroup. And then we go to the last four, which also form a group. Four, like melting ice. So in the original, in the time of the writing of the Tao Te Ching, China, uh, have been an agrarian society for already thousands of years, several thousand years. So the changing of seasons was, uh, was of importance to the ancient Chinese. And in this particular case, what is being evoked is that when you are transitioning from winter to spring, the ice that formed during the colder times of the winter, they begin to melt into uh, to water. So as spring air surrounds the land, things are warming up. So like melting ice, it's, it's describing the feeling at that time. When spring comes, it is warm, it's melting the ice, it's, everything is, is loose, relaxed, comfortable. So that is, that is the, uh, the, the context of the, of the original. This is applying that context to personal interactions. In Chinese culture, it is very common to use the winds of spring, spring wind, to describe an interaction with a wise person who makes you feel great. This is a reference to the feeling of experiencing a breeze in springtime that is no longer the, the harsh, biting, cold winds that you felt back in winter. So that's, that's why we're using this expression. So the warmth of spring melts the winter ice. Dao masters are naturally caring and considerate their presence feels like the warm winds of spring that can disarm even the coldest individuals. So there are, I've been privileged to meet uh, Tao masters who are like this. Uh, every interaction with them is, uh, is a treasure, uh, is uh, something to be, to be cherished. And again, the spring wind, Chun Feng, is used to describe interactions with them, warm and comfortable, makes you feel great. Next, let's go to characteristic number five, like plain wood. 
The Dell Master is simple, elegant, direct. So plain, a, a plain piece of wood is the, the point of maximum potential. This is the concept behind Pu. When applied to life, to be simple, to be simplistic, to be even minimalist at some, at some points, the key, uh, which we will see again later on in this chapter and also throughout the Tao Te Ching, is to always focus on just enough and nothing more. That is, not too much and not too little, just the perfect amount or the perfect point of equilibrium. This applies to everything. So, for instance, words, speaking not too little, not complete silence, but also not too much, not too chatty, just enough words to do the job of conveying what you mean to say. Same with actions. Don't do too little, that's inaction. That perhaps is a reflection of apathy. And don't do too much that really just gets you in more trouble. So do just enough and nothing more. The point of equilibrium. So I think we all know from personal experience, it's not that easy. And this is where experience and skill in living life will make a huge difference. So to kind of sum that up, Dao masters embody the Pu concept. They prefer simplicity in everything they do and would often use a minimalist approach. Characteristic number six, like a valley, open, accepting, and nurturing. This is very important, um, especially today, in our world today, it is very important that you keep this in mind as you encounter various people. Are they tolerant of those who are different from them? Can they uh, encounter other people, accept other people with an open heart? Well, sometimes that's not the case. In your own travels, you may come across people who seem very knowledgeable in the Tao. Perhaps they know Chinese. Perhaps, perhaps they have impressive titles, but knowledge and titles don't matter if they turn out to be, to have racist tendencies or perhaps a tinge of homophobia. Well, if that is the case, then regardless of the amount of knowledge or titles, they're ignorant. They're ignorant about the world and they don't really know the Tao. So let's take a look at the commentary here. So the valley, valley sustains myriad living things in a similar way. Dao masters welcome diverse perspectives, perspectives that may be different from their own. Let's move on to the next characteristic, which is the final characteristic. Very important, like muddy water. Now I mentioned last time that muddy water can be used in a variety of ways in discussions about the Tao. It can be, for instance, uh, a metaphor for showing how gradual understanding dawns on you like muddy water settling settling down with you know quietness calmness so the light of understanding can shine through here it can be used in another way that is uh, this is in context of the uh, very old expression about the world being dust hong chen the red dust so Mixing with the dust is the same as saying that you are part of this world, you accept yourself as part of this world, you involve yourself in the affairs of this world, and you are fully engaged. You're not a bystander, you're not a spectator. 
mixing with everyone, actively involved and engaged in the community, constantly interacting with people, helping people, guiding people, learning from people. So some in the community will be your students. Some in the community will be your teachers. Some are students and teachers all at the same time. Some are travel companions. So I find this, uh, so, so here, here's what I here's what I really want to say about this. Let me let me show you the the, the little box below. In other words, the Dao Master is most definitely not a hermit. The Dao Master can be a sociable person without going over that and becoming a fluttering social butterfly. In the uh, in the West, I find uh, quite often, more often than than I, I did in the East, that you know somehow spiritual pursuits means that you must be uh, uh, you must be leaving civilization far behind. So I still uh, I still encounter that from time to time. Once in a while, in daily life, I still hear people talking lovingly about escaping civilization, you know, to pursue spirituality. And they talk about perhaps attending a silent retreat where they will spend an entire weekend or an entire week or multiple weeks saying absolutely nothing or the minimal amount of communication. Or they talk excitedly about traveling to China, India, or Tibet as sort of a spiritual pilgrimage. They are seeking Shangri-La or Xanadu, perhaps. Well. Later on, they will discover on their own that it was actually the trip, the travel might have been nice, but it's actually not necessary to travel to find spirituality. So I would like to ask everyone to take a look at these seven characteristics. Look at the blue text, somebody who was mindful, conscientious, proper, courteous, warm, loose, relaxed, simple, elegant, direct, open, accepting, nurturing, and someone who's mixing with everybody else, actively involved, actively engaged. Question, can you visualize such a person? What do you think? Do you know such a person? or perhaps someone who's close to it. If you have if you have a good pastor in your local congregation, perhaps the pastor qualifies as such a person. Next question. If you're having a hard time visualizing such a person as being someone you already know, but you can visualize such a person in terms of an idealized vision of what a person can be, then the next question is, can you imagine yourself as such a person? Imagine yourself as somebody who's very mindful all the time, conscientious, whether you are being with other people, whether you are with other people or by yourself, someone who's courteous to everybody, Someone who's warm, personable, approachable, relaxed, simple, simplifying, streamlining your life, open and accepting, and having that social interaction, being involved, caring enough to do what you can for the community. Can you imagine yourself as such a person? I would like to ask everyone to remember the seven characteristics of Dao Masters that we can all emulate. Number one, be mindful in every step. No matter where you walk, you always want to know exactly what is ahead before planting down your step. Number two, be constantly guided by your conscience. So your conscience is 
ever present, always watching, like the four neighbors. So be guided by that and you will never go wrong, no matter what. Number three, be impeccably courteous to all. I know there are some people out there who deserve rudeness. And that is the common way of treating such individuals. They deserve nothing but the rudest uh, reaction from you. But if you can rise above and be different, then you get that much closer to the level of the Tao Master. Number four, be approachable and warm in your interactions. And I know that it's not always easy. It's uh, There's going to be times when the people that just get under your skin that are so annoying that you cannot wait to be away from them. Absolutely. And it's just like, it's just like number three. If you can transcend that and rise above and still have warmth in your voice as you address them, then you will be able to go beyond the norm and approach the level of the Tao Master. Number five, be plain and simple in every aspect of life. So I doubt that we have anyone who's, you know, who's really afflicted with hoarding in our group. Nevertheless, I'm willing to bet that there are all things that we can let go of, things that we can discard and never really miss them. Now, I plan to do exactly the same thing myself because I want to be consistent in my words and actions. I talk about discarding things. Well, that's one of the, one of the to-do items that I've uh, set for myself later on today. I'm gonna go through some old stuff and hopefully get rid of a few. So be plain and simple, simplify and discard the, the clutter that may be taking up too much space in your life. Number six, be open and accepting of everyone. So the visual imagery is the valley. The stream in the valley nurtures all regardless of who they are. Can we get to that level, you know, not just the people we consider deserving, but all sentient beings are deserving of our help. Not easy, but I think we can do it. Number seven, be involved in your community. And this is the one that I want to speak on a little more because this is the point that Alex also brought up. You know, he said, this is an open invitation that perhaps, you know, we uh, having gotten together and shared the Tao today, you know, we move on to the week ahead. We will have opportunities to share the Tao as well with our social circles, within our individual communities. So the invitation, the challenge is to get more involved, get other people involved, they perhaps will benefit the Tao from benefit from the Tao just as you have. So please pass the word on that they too can sample the goodness of the Tao. Our meeting has come to an end, but the journey continues on. Let us travel safely. Until next time, may the Tao fill you with peace and happiness.